I have made a lot of potential straw hat videos because just like you, it's one of the things that interests me the most. But the problem with that is I've now seen a lot of good arguments for all the straw hat candidates. And at a certain point, I was like, are we getting seven new straw hats by the end of Wano? But obviously that's not gonna happen. And after some careful consideration, I believe there will only be one final main straw hat crew member. What do I mean by main straw hat crew member? I don't know, stick around to find out. So first, if you're new to the channel or not yet subscribed, make Make sure you do subscribe and hit that bell as well. And if you're having a good time, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. But yeah, let's get into the video, starting with the question of why exactly should there only be one more straw hat? And well, the first reason goes back to that panel in chapter one. Chapter one is where Oda established a lot of important things in the story. Luffy's dream of becoming the Pirate King, introducing Shanks and the Red Hair Pirates. But there were a lot of little foreshadowings Oda dropped as well. Like what Shanks was doing within the East Blue for a year, Luffy, once he actually gets the treasure, paying Maki no back. There were definitely a lot of things Oda set up from the get-go and one of those things could have been the number of straw hats because at the end of the chapter Luffy does say that he wants about 10 crew members. Now the important thing about this is that recently in the One Piece magazine they actually came out and clarified that Luffy is not included in those 10 that he mentioned. So just based off the fact they came out and clarified that definitely means we are getting at least one more straw hat because there's currently only nine besides Luffy. So the idea that we're just done getting straw hats we could just toss that out the window. But the next thing you might be wondering is why I think there will only be one more because even though Luffy does say 10, he's kind of vague about it. Some translations have it as at least 10 members. The official Viz has it as about 10 members. So either way, it does feel like Oda gave himself some room to make changes and he has made changes in the story before. But for me, the main thing we have to consider is how much we have left in the story. Oda has consistently said the story's ending in about five years. I think it'll probably be closer to seven. But either way, the story is definitely heading towards its end, which means whoever joins now doesn't have a lot of time to get development. So when we're looking at all these candidates, they have to be characters that have gotten a lot of development and should get more shine in Wano before they join. So like some people have mentioned, maybe we get a new straw hat in like Elbath. And as cool as that idea is, I don't think that will happen. It's just far too late in the story for us to get a rando from Elbath to join. So honestly, I do believe the current candidates that we have are the best candidates that we're gonna get. And when we're looking at all of these candidates, I believe a lot of them have very good cases for being a straw hat. That's why at one point I was like, are they all gonna end up joining? But when we look at each of these characters and their future role in the story and the development that Oda has given them, I honestly think there's only one candidate that has a strong case to be a main straw hat crew member. So let's just go down the list of candidates and break them down. And the first ones I actually wanna start with are a caveat. Because the way Oda can stick with the 10 crew members foreshadowing and add more crew members are apprentices because technically you might not count them as main straw hats. And it just turns out we do have two very good candidates for apprentices in Momo and Tama. I already did an entire video on them. So if you want to hear more thoughts on them, check that video out. But very quickly, I'm just going to break down the main arguments for each of them. Starting with Momonosuke, pretty much the argument for him is that his dream is to become the Shogun of Wano, but he's not yet ready. So instead, he's going to go and travel with the straw hats and learn from them, specifically Luffy, who he's looked up to as a leader consistently. Meanwhile, you have other straw hats that can teach him other things like Zoro, who's taught him a little bit about swordsmanship, and also Robin, who could teach him how to read Aponoglyphs, something he was supposed to know but never got a chance to learn. So yeah, that's really the main argument for Momonosuke, and I think it makes a lot of sense. But I think the stronger point about Momonosuke's character is that he has a lot of development. To become a straw hat, we've come up with a lot of different qualifications from sad backs to to having a dream. But the main important thing we really have to look at is have they gotten enough development as a character worthy of a straw hat? And Momonosuke is one of the more developed characters out of all of these candidates. He's been with us pretty much since the start of the new world and has gotten a ton of development as a character. Like, I'll be honest, I did not like the kid at first. He was kind of just this scared, annoying, pervy little kid. But over time, he's gotten these really good moments for his character and he's definitely grown on me. So for Momonosuke, not only does he have a good argument for becoming a straw hat, but he's also gotten that development as well. Tama, on the other hand, also has a pretty clear cut argument. Tama is somebody that already wants to be a pirate. Also, Ace promised her that he would let her on his crew before. So the idea is Luffy carrying on Ace's will here and letting Tama join his crew. Now, as far as development, she's definitely lacking compared to Momonosuke, but she's gotten a good amount of screen time. She was pretty much the first main character we met in Wano and throughout all three acts, she's been pretty prevalent. 
Like even in Act 3, her coming to Onigashima, I did not expect, but right now she's doing her thing. Like Randy Choi says, the dangos are flying. But yeah, her resolve and conviction has been really good in Onigashima. She even says to Usopp and Nami that she came here as a samurai. So the argument that she's not yet a bewitching Kunoichi, I feel like is a little weak now. So overall, Momo and Tama both have very strong arguments for becoming Straw Hats. But if I had to pick right now whether or not they were gonna join, I would probably lean towards no. Let me explain why. Starting with Tama, she's definitely gotten a lot of shine, but she's definitely not there yet in terms of development. Like I feel like the general audience still hasn't connected with her on that level yet. Honestly, for me, if it weren't for the anime, I probably wouldn't feel as connected to her character either. The anime is where she really could shine because of her voice acting and she's just so cute. They also kind of fleshed out the Ace flashback a little more, giving that extra layer of connection. But even despite that, I feel like she still needs another layer of development to get to that straw hat level. And there is absolutely a path for that. Wano is nowhere close to over. The theory I really like is Randy Choi's theory that Tama is a Korozumi. I'm not gonna explain that in detail here. Just go check out his channel. You don't even have to see that video. You could probably click on any one of his videos. He'll talk about Tama in there somewhere. But I will link the video in the description, so go check that out. But yeah, Tama being a Korozumi would add so much more to her character and give her that extra development. So if that theory comes true, I can absolutely see her joining the Straw Hats. But as of right now, we just haven't seen it yet, and there is a chance that even if that theory comes true, she doesn't end up joining. So that's really the main thing for Tama, but I feel like what's actually weighing her down more is Momonosuke. Because for me, if the Straw Hats are gonna get apprentices, it's either gonna be both or neither. I feel like if the Straw Hats are gonna add apprentices, you have to have that parallel to Shanks and Buggy. Honestly, it would feel kind of weird if only Momo or Tama joined. So that's why I think we're either getting both or neither of them. And for Momonosuke, I feel like there's a much stronger argument against him. See, the argument for Momonosuke surrounds this character conflict that he has, that he's not good enough and he's not like his father Odin. But personally, I believe the story goes another direction where he stops trying to be Odin and realizes he doesn't have to be. So instead of following Odin's footsteps and becoming a pirate, I think he stays behind and becomes the Shogun, something his dad never could do. Because at the end of the day, he is just not Odin. Odin was completely built different. And honestly, I don't expect Momonosuke to be as strong as Odin in the future. But I also don't think he has to be because he's shown that he could be a great leader regardless. And if we look at Momo and Odin's stories, there's kind of a strong contrast between them. Odin was this absolute monster that was born in Wano but always wanted to go out and explore. Momo, on the other hand, was born a pirate on the Pirate King ship and has already explored with the future Pirate King and Luffy. Unlike Odin, he's already been to the outside world and he's actually spent a good amount of his life as a pirate. So personally, I really like the idea that he stays behind and becomes the Shogun of Wano, doing the one thing that Odin just couldn't do. Now, of course, I also agree he's not completely ready to be a Shogun, but there's plenty of people in Wano to help him grow from the Scabbers to Hiori. Also, Hiori is a person a lot of people said should be Shogun, which honestly, I don't really see a strong case for it. It's not like Hiori has gotten a ton of shine as a great leader. She's definitely older and understands things a lot better, but it's not like she's been studying politics this whole time. So yeah, for Momonosuke, I really do think he just stays behind and becomes the Shogun. He could grow within Wano, also learn more about his powers with Zunisha. That's something he really wouldn't be able to do if he went with the Straw Hats. It's not like they're gonna have a big ass elephant just trailed them the whole time. And honestly, I can see a scenario where he realizes that he's better suited to become the Shogun as opposed to being a pirate. And in a way, he might be just working to get stronger so he can help Luffy down the line. Because if it turns out Momonosuke is an ancient weapon, he should get involved in the final war. And that way you have the parallel between Shirahoshi and Momonosuke and even possibly Vivi, who we'll talk about in a little bit. So yeah, for the apprentices, Momonosuke is the one I really feel more strongly against. And overall, just for both of them, I worry that they won't be able to contribute. Like one thing that's been building up is the Straw Hats versus the Blackbeard Pirates, which I currently see as this 11 versus 11 battle, where you have Blackbeard and his 10 Titanic captains versus Luffy and the Straw Hats. In that sort of battle, I don't really know what Momonosuke and Tama are gonna do. But I will say this, besides the main candidate that I think is most likely to join, I do think these apprentices have the second highest chance. Because for Tama, if she gets that extra layer of development as a Korozumi, I can totally see her joining. For Momonosuke, on the other hand, if Toki is back into the story, then I could really see him potentially leaving. Because Toki is a person that has gotten that emphasis as a good leader in the Odin flashback. So for me, for them to join, both of these theories have to come true, which is kind of funny because they're like major theories for Randy Choi. And the guy hasn't missed very much, so I'm kind 
kind of betting against the odds here, but I'm happy to be wrong. But with that being said, let's get to our main candidates. And the first one I want to start with is Carrot. Now, Carrot's been an up and down case for me because as a casual reader, I just never felt like she had a strong enough case. She just never felt like she had enough development and focus to be a straw hat. But then the first straw hat video I made, the third ever video on this channel was the case for Carrot joining as a straw hat. And once I did the research for that video, I realized she checked a lot of the boxes. She's got the sad backstory with the whole Pedro thing, a potential dream with the dawn of the new world. There was a heavy emphasis on her ability as a lookout as well. So after that video, I was on board. I was like, Carrot should join. But now that I'm really looking at Carrot's story, overall, she still just feels like a background character. Like quite literally, she is always in the background of every single scene, even when she's with the Straw Hats. And as far as character development, she's gotten a good amount, but there really hasn't been enough. Like pretty much for the majority of Wano, she hasn't been focused at all. And even in Whole Cake Island, a bunch of characters completely outshined her. And while I do believe she should get more screen time in Onigashima, because when she lost the Peril Sparrow, there was kind of a caveat of the clouds blocking the moon. So I think she will get more screen time in Wano, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. And listen, I'm on the side of liking Carrot as a character. If I had a choice and I could tell Oda make Carrot join and give her more screen time, I would tell him yes. But this is not my story, it's Oda's story. And when I'm looking at how much screen time and focus Oda has given Carrot, I just don't think it's enough for her to join as a straw hat. Also, one more thing to consider is that her relationship with Luffy is not that strong either. Like almost all these other candidates have established a strong relationship with Luffy. Carrot, on the other hand, just bit his ear a few times and not much outside of that. So yeah, for Carrot, I think it's unlikely. I do hope she gets involved in the final war and comes back into the story later. It's possible she still ends up becoming a pirate in like a mink samurai crew. But the Carrot for Straw Hat train, I just don't think it's gonna happen. But next, let's talk about Vivi, who's been a very low-key Straw Hat candidate. Pretty much the idea for her is that after the reverie, Cobra is now dead and Vivi is now on the run after Wapo leaked her secret of being a pirate before. So right now, she has no place to go, so she ends up going back to the Straw Hats. And of course, the Straw Hats would accept her like they said they would when they left each other. So yeah, that's really the main argument and Vivi going back to the Straw Hats is not that big of a stretch, especially considering we had Leo and Sai at the Reverie and they have Luffy's Vivi card. So the argument as a whole makes a lot of sense, but personally, I still don't see her joining as a main Straw Hat crew member. And this is tough for me because Vivi is one of my favorite characters. I think I even like her more than Frankie. So I absolutely want her to return to the story, but I just don't think she becomes a Straw Hat. Because for Vivi, I still feel the same way about her when we left Alabasta. Even though I liked Vivi's character when there was that moment where it was like, is Vivi gonna join the Straw Hats? I thought to myself, no. Because first off, Vivi is just not strong enough and not ready for that journey. And that is much more true now because before you might have been like, okay, Vivi and Usopp, I don't know who wins. But after all these crazy battles the Straw Hats have gone through and the post time skip training, they're just way above Vivi at this point unless she's been just doing some brutal training during the past two years. But even besides power, in terms of goals, Vivi is still gonna be tied to Alabasta. Like eventually she has to go back. So pretty much after the final war, she's not staying with the Straw Hats. So in that case, I feel like she's in the same position as she is now, where she's considered a Straw Hat, but she's only kind of a temporary one. So honestly for Vivi, I feel like the best bet for her to return is later in the story, not right after Wano. Because in the final war against the world government is where she can really contribute. Whereas if she joins the Straw Hats now and they go to Elbaf, I don't really know what her role there is. And bringing it back to that matchup with the Blackbeard Pirates, I don't think Vivi's gonna be able to take anybody on 1v1. So in that case, it'll be similar to Alabasta where she's like doing something else while all the Straw Hats are fighting. And it made sense in Alabasta because that was really her arc in her kingdom. But in an arc like Elbath, I just feel like her role is gonna be very diminished. So I do feel like Vivi will eventually return and rejoin the Straw Hats, but it's only gonna be a quick temporary thing and much later in the story. There's also the theory that she might be an ancient weapon, so her power might be stronger that way. But I actually feel like that hurts her case for being a straw hat because she's not just gonna bust out the powers of an ancient weapon against like San Juan Wolf. Instead, I feel like it parallels her more to Shirahoshi and possibly Momonosuke. I'll probably discuss this whole topic in another video, so be on the lookout for that. But overall for Vivi, I love her character. I think she will eventually come back. It's just not to join as a straw hat after Wano. And now finally, before we get to my main candidate for joining the straw hats, let's just quickly touch on some honorable mentions. First off, we have Smoker, which you might be shocked to hear, but this is an argument Mr. Morge has made a case for, and Morge has always made some very good points to back up his arguments, but I do feel like his argument applies more so 
for Smoker helping the Straw Hats in the final war. Like Smoker going as far as to join the Straw Hats and becoming a crew member, that's like a step too far in my opinion. So for Smoker, that's a no for me. Another one a lot of people mention is Law. And Law is just not gonna leave his crew and end up joining the Straw Hats. And honestly, besides them, I don't even think there are any other more honorable mentions. If you do have some that you feel strongly about, let me know in the comments. But also back up your reasoning. Don't just tell me Caribou for Straw Hat without anything backing it up. But with that being said, let's get to the candidate that I think is most likely to join, and that is Yamato. Now, I know some of you are gonna say that's very hypocritical because Yamato has been in the story for like 20 chapters, and this whole time I've been talking about enough development for Straw Hats. But for Yamato, I'm essentially placing all my bets on the potential of her character. Because so far in the story, we have definitely not seen enough out of her. She is absolutely strong. She has established a connection with Luffy. She's also asked Luffy if she could join the crew as well. So there's definitely a lot going for her. But there's a lot more development that we need out of her before she becomes a straw hat. But the thing is, I think it's very likely that she's gonna get that. Already, Oda is kind of setting up this character conflict within her. I did an entire video kind of talking about her identity crisis, so I'm not gonna address it in this video. But I think Yamato will get a lot more shine in Wano and we're gonna explore her character a lot more. And it's not gonna be just surface level focus like a fight, but much more deeper exploration of her character and some major development. Because not only does she have some of these character conflicts, but she's directly tied to Kaido, who's definitely gonna get his backstory fleshed out. And as far as the future for her story, she absolutely has to go out and explore the seas. There's been this idea that she becomes the Shogun of Wano, which I don't see at all. She's literally been trapped in Onigashima and Wano for 28 years. One of the biggest reasons she looks up to Odin is because of how he achieved freedom. She even had this line where she said to Luffy that he's more Odin than she is because Luffy is much more free and he's a pirate and he can go out and explore. So I think even if she doesn't join the Straw Hats, she ends up taking over the Beast Pirates or something like that. And honestly, I just think her joining the Straw Hats is much more better for her story. And when we look at the qualifications for a Straw Hat, she definitely checks a lot of the boxes. The Straw Hats are known for being diverse and yes, Yamato does look like Nami, but there's a lot of different other elements to her like the potential of her devil fruit, which could make her the first mythical or ancient Zoan on the crew. Also her race, which is tied to Kaido, we have no idea what that is. So I think in terms of how unique her character is, she definitely fits. And then there's her power, which is ridiculously strong already. Like for Yamato, I'm excited to see her fight and I think she could take on a Blackbeard Titanic captain. As a matter of fact, I think she's gonna get a pretty good fight in Wano against Jack. So power for her is not a problem either. Where it gets kind of iffy is the role on the ship and the dream. But the thing is for Yamato, I'm banking on the potential so those things could still get fleshed out. Like for role on the ship, a lot of people have said lock keeper, but the counter argument has been there's not much journey left. But I will counter that with Yamato is not only staying with them until the story ends. So the Straw Hats are definitely gonna keep adventuring after the story ends and Yamato will have a lot more to write about. But again, something else might pop up as we learn more about her. Same thing for her dream. There could definitely be a dream developed for her as we find out more about her. And yeah, overall for Yamato, I'm just banking on her potential. It's almost like I'm drafting an NBA player. Over here, we have a bunch of candidates that had two to four year college careers. They've kind of proven themselves. They have some really good skills and all of them I think are gonna be good players, but I don't think any of them are gonna be stars. But over here, I have a kid right out of high school that really hasn't showcased much against high competition, but he's just flashed incredible potential that could make him into a star. So I'm gonna bank on that kid. And that kid for me is Yamato, who I think will be the final straw hat. And maybe there's a chance the straw hats get apprentices as well. But yeah, overall, those are my thoughts and arguments. I definitely wanna hear your thoughts on this. So let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. If you had a good time, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell as well to not miss an upload. Thank you all to my King Pirates Elite members on YouTube and Patreon for supporting the channel. Check me out on Twitter. I'm DZAC and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.